If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. The Book of Hebrews is there to destroy Judaism. It's finished, done with. Now it's Christianity. My name is Wes. No, my name is Nazi Matsoff from West Orange, New Jersey. Welcome. All right. You hear me now? All right. Sure. Yep. All right. Um, the, my question's on Hebrews 8, on where he misquotes Jeremiah 31 there. And he, not just, he, I, I've, I've listened to you before that he, take, he, he deletes the word Baalti and replaces it with something with, with I rejected, I rejected them, which isn't there. But that, from the way, when I read the passage, it, that's like the least of the problems with that. The, the biggest problem is that he sort of like flips, his, he flips the passage straight on its head and makes it seem, and make, say the opposite of what's actually saying. When, when you're, you're me, you're speaking of a new covenant, he's actually saying quite the opposite. But it's not just that, but like, he seems to tell you right to your face that he's flipping it on its head because he quote, he actually quotes the puzzle where it's, where where Yirmiyah is defining what the bris kadosh is going to be to be where he says I'm going to inscribe the law into their heart, hearts into their minds but yeah he but nevertheless he still goes ahead with his own version of of the bris kadosh and says that no it actually just means that is that you, that Jesus is going to replace Yashka is going to replace the face of is replace is bringing some new covenant that he's going to replace replace it for you. I'm just I'm curious that as like why Christians don't see don't see this obvious problem from the from the from that if you actually forget about just reading just going actually to Yermi and reading the whole parish in context. Do you know any Christians that read Jeremiah 31 and I mean, do you know one Christian that really knows Jeremiah 31 in context? I know the answer. The answer is no. You don't know one, and the answer is Christians don't look it up. What is the book of Hebrews? It's a screed that goes on for 13 chapters. It's the longest argument against Judaism in all the Christian Bible. And in fact, that's how the book of Hebrews begins. The book of Hebrews starts off by saying that in the past, God spoke to our ancestors who the prophets in many ways, but in the last day, he's spoken by his son, whom he anointed all things, through whom all majors. So he he actually begins the whole book of whole book by saying, in the past, this is how, you know, God spoke to the prophets of old. But now he's speaking through Jesus Christ. So the whole it starts off. So the whole book of Hebrews. Mitchila at Soifai from its beginning to its end is there to convey that Judaism is no longer valid and it is all fulfilled in Jesus. And I will tell you that the reason I care about Christians, even those who curse me, is I know they're not reading Jeremiah in context. I know that. And that's why. I spend a lot of time on air going through the passages themselves with the hope that there will be Christians who will read the whole chapter. Jeremiah 31, as in 30, is very committed to conveying that Israel will, is forever. The restoration of Klal Yisrael is in Jeremiah 30. The great tribulation of Jacob is in chapter 30. In Jeremiah 31, we have Jeremiah's opposition to vicarious atonement, which begins, and no Christian knows about it. They don't know it. Then why? Because they're evil? No, because the churches don't teach it. Sunday schools don't teach it. They don't. So you're absolutely correct. Hebrews not only changes a passage, Hebrews 8 verse 9, alters Jeremiah 31 where it says, I was their husband. That word Baal, actually the root appears many times in Tanakh, which means a man, a husband, or an owner. It means a master of sorts. I was their husband. That Baalti, that exact structure, only appears twice in Tanakh, both of them in Jeremiah. The earlier one is Jeremiah 30, verse 14. Okay. Hashem is saying, I am the husband of the children of Israel. This theme is not only in Jeremiah, but it's found all over Tanakh. Isaiah 54 is God is Israel's husband who has suffered miserably. That's what's going on. Do Christians pay attention? No. 
because they're obsessed with 53. Why? Because they're evil people. They're not evil at all. They just go to church, and this is what they hear in the in the pulpit, and they're told this. And Hebrews 8 ends by saying that which is old will disappear. That's the point, that Jesus is here to replace the old. Jesus is higher than the angels, and he's not an angel. That's how Hebrews begins. And why don't Christians take note of that when they say the angel Lord in the Hebrew Bible is Jesus when the book of Hebrews begins by saying it's not the case? Greater than Moses, Joshua, Jesus is our Sabbath, he's our high priest, because he's replacing everything. Incidentally, unlike the Gospels, the book of Hebrews was written before the war with Rome. That means Judaism really posed competition. Probably the safest date for Hebrews, let's just say it's written, let's say, 64 but it's certainly written before 66. It's certainly before 70 because the temple is operating in its full order. And the book of Hebrews is there to convey that in the past, God spoke to the ancestors. Look at the first verse of Hebrews. Take the whole book of Hebrews, verse 1 and 2 and 3. Just read it. He's saying it. In the past, God spoke to you through the prophets. That's how things went on in the past. But now we got a whole new ball game. That's how it starts. And unlike Paul's letters, which are, Paul was a very temperamental person. So Paul could be speaking in one direction and he'll just shoot off into another direction completely. That's the way he wrote. That was his style. The, the Hebrews is written very differently. It's highly systematic. So Hebrews doesn't care about what it actually says in Jeremiah 31 that God would prepare our hearts, that people would turn back the tire, that in those days no one will have to teach anyone about God, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. And then afterwards says, look up at the sky. You see the sun, you see the stars, the moon. If these signs will pass before me, if, if the very foundation of the earth could be, so will I cast off Israel. So Jeremiah 31 is committed to conveying that Israel is forever and can never be destroyed. That's the whole point of it. And it's, a, and it's an incredible chapter because it was written by Jeremiah when during a time when he was witnessing the destruction of the first temple. How he did it, I have no idea. It's really, he's a very difficult prophet to understand how he held his stuff together. And Jeremiah was a prophet for a very long time. He was a prophet for 41 years, from the age of 15 to the age of 56. A very long time. And what he absorbed, observed and endured and nearly assassinated, he wasn't assassinated. God promised him from the get-go he's not going to let it happen to him. He was almost killed. A black slave saved him from quicksand. He was, he was close to death a number of occasions, but he made it. How in the midst of the disbelief of others he managed to keep it together and view into the future, deep into the future, that Israel will be preserved and never allow his emotions to get to him. You know, he's a very young Navi. He's very young. He was a teenager when he, would be, when he became a Navi, a prophet. In fact, when Hashem called him to be a Navi, a prophet, Jeremiah, like Moses, argued with God why he really is not the right person for this vocation. And he said, Naranachi, I'm a kid. He was. He was a teenager. Hashem says, you got what it takes. I, from the womb, I already, if you want to do it, but you have what it takes, you, you can do it. Mm. Jeremiah was a very reluctant fellow. And how he didn't give up and continued saying, but it's going to happen, is really hard to believe. But he, the book of Hebrews was written not by Paul, but someone who took his cues from Paul. Because Paul's letters are done by 60. Everything Paul wrote was during the 50s, right? So this is just a few years later. So it's Pauline in its ideas. And uh, the book of Hebrews is Lahashmid Ulaharag. The book of Hebrews is there to destroy Judaism. It's done away with. That's our, it's finished. Done with. Now it's Christianity. And that's how 
things are being fulfilled. And, and Hebrews 8 is not an exception to that. How could Jesus be a high priest? It's after the order of Malkitzedek. What does that mean? Hebrews can care less, and, and Christians don't care. Why aren't they care? Because no, they're not learning Genesis 14. You know, not learning about what's the blessing of Malki said that they gave to Abraham to defeat his enemies. Read the context. They don't. They don't. Why? Because it's just the way it is. They don't. And that's why the work of what we're doing is so important. Because the people who are are in my interlocutors are not all, but many of them are good faith actors. They mean well. But Nebuch, Nebuch, because they grew up in the church, they're lost. And it's our job to bring them the light of Tyre, and may we see the coming of the true Mashiach, the Mehed of the Omenu, quickly in our time. Thank you. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Yetzir <laughs> Who will